गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग टेक ए सीट थैंक यू सर यू मिस्टर लक्ष्य आनंद यस सर लक्ष्य कैन आई प्रिज्यूम दैट यू आर वैक्सीनेटेड यस सर आई एम यू आर वैक्सीनेट सिंस एवरी मेम्बर इन द बोर्ड इज ऑल्सो वैक्सीनेटेड सो आई थिंक वी आर ओके विद द वे वी आर और यू वॉन्ट मी टू कॉल फॉर द मास्क एंड ऑल नो सर आई एम फाइन यू फाइन यस सर कैन यू स्टार्ट यस सर फाइन फाइन देन Tell us something about you, sir. My name is Lakshya Anand, and I did my graduation in electrical engineering from Delhi Technological University, and currently I am pursuing masters in history from Delhi University. My hobbies includes uh, letter writing, poetry writing, learning new languages, and interacting with new people. Sir, my father is a uh, daily wage laborer in a factory, and my mother is a homemaker. That's an interesting uh, uh, life you've been living. I mean, you. Uh, you just mentioned that your father you coming from a humble background relatively a very humble background yes sir and you were able to get into dtu to yes, do sir. electrical engineering yes sir and then you ditched all this all the um, uh, all everything that your family put in and you yourself put in and you went on to do your masters in history yes sir. rather than continuing to work in the area which for which you were trained in a premier institution uh, do you believe that uh, Now there is a there is something wrong here. I mean, you got your priorities wrong, isn't it? No, sir. Sir, I have been always keen to learn history since my childhood. Uh, I did not get the chance to study history because of my science background in my school. See, in our country, yes, sir. It's a privilege. It's a privilege uh, for somebody to say I wanted to learn this thing and I started learning that thing. Yes, sir. Uh, but then there are constraints, and the constraint you yourself mentioned. Yes. Sir. So don't you think that it was incumbent upon you to actually utilize the skills you had and uh, maybe leave the those uh, fancy ideas of what I like, I want to study for a later thing, and have worked in the industry, uh, sir. i am like i i want to be a teacher one day like i want to do teaching i was very interested in teaching when i was doing my engineering and uh, i was always i i was always hoping to de- give the civil services exam also because i am very interested in foreign services uh so and i took history as my option so i i thought that i should do something in history i should learn the subject in detail well i hope you see the logical inconsistency in the things you're saying but let's leave it for a while now you said you like history Yes, you have done electrical engineering. Yes, sir. So, can we talk about the history of electrical electricity for a while? Just yes, give me sir. a brief account from the the way we say that the electricity, as we know, the discovery of that to uh, the current uh, time. Uh, sir, electricity was first discovered by P. Ampere, who first discovered the electric current in the coil while he was uh, pursuing his research in uh, in his uh, university. Then the major Uh, major watershed movement was when uh, franklin uh, benjamin franklin he discovered uh, the electrical waves from the sky's thunder show thunderbolt but the moment that he, electrical engineering or electricity became a major part in the engineering and science was when uh, uh, nikola tesla discovered the alternating current and this uh, wo- uh, current uh, the war of currents it started between edison and tesla after that electrical engineering became a core branch along with civil and mechanical engineering in engineering do you think as a historian because you are a history student the way you have traced history of a particular um, thing it's it's like uh, abruptly giving the names of the individuals rather than giving the historicity of the uh, concept isn't it yes sir how do you believe that uh, i mean i'm since you're a history student uh, uh you must have gone through different school of thoughts when it comes to history right yes sir can we discuss a few yes okay tell me what is the difference between marxist history and subaltern history difference sir marxist history it revolves around the change in the economy of the world and the society of the world and the change comes from the society within the society while the subaltern history as per ranjit guha and uh, uh and shayad amin it is the history of the people below the ladder of economy and the society the history which traces its root from the downturn like the women the peasants the workers while the marxist history it traces the reasons behind the consequences that occurs in the subaltern history so in a way to like in toto to conclude i can say that marxist history is a way 
how things work in economic ba economic background of the people downturn while the subaltern history is the consequence of it hey, thank you ma'am lakshya yes ma'am uh, what is your roll number ma'am 0872109 and sum of it ma'am 27 okay uh i was uh, hearing to your conversation your father is a daily wage worker you said uh how much does he earn like can i ask like what are the challenges of uh, working as a daily wage worker ma'am uh ma'am the most major challenge that i have felt in my life is that his income is not stable and his job is also not stable it depends on season and the demand of the of the, the of the industry he is working in like uh, for two years he was un unemployed in the covid 19 period that's the major challenge the second biggest challenge is that since he is also uneducated he don't know his rights his legal rights and he he, he has to like he has to back he has been backseated many a times by the employer uh in terms of the wages that they are paying the number of hours they, he is working these are the major challenges that he faced and uh, it's a informal industry yes sir in, yes ma'am it's in, an informal informal industry. industry so can you suggest few ways to uh, actually bring this uh, these workers into mainstream in a formal industrial setup ma'am uh, i believe since i have seen my father working in these industries i believe that education and awareness can be a big tool like he did not know many of his rights until i told him that you can do this and you can do that so i believe that if we generate awareness about their rights the legal rights they have or we set up the labor courts or the consumer courts at the regional level so that they have the access of their that it and we have scrutiny on the employer employer especially in unorganized sector since it is very segregated all across the world all across the nation especially in rural area so giving them access to remedy the legal remedy i think that will be the major step and also providing them with the social security okay and what about skilling skills ma yes ma'am we can upskill their, their work also we can train them and we can upskill reskill them so that they get a uh, better job there recently there was a street vendors bill street vendors uh, uh, like setup was created do you know about it no ma'am i'm not aware street Sorry. vendors you don't know about anything about street vendors street formalization vendors. of street vendors ma'am no i i have not heard of this bill you haven't heard of this no ma'am okay uh so tell me why haven't you uh, you know stepped up and uh, helped your father and uh, rather uh, shall we presume that uh, uh, lakshay is uh, a selfish person who thinks about his own ambitions more than uh, the exigencies of family or Uh, uh rather than helping his family ma'am i have tried my best to help my family throughout my engineering i paid my own fees working part time in night time okay still today i'm i'm working i pay my rent and i pay i pay for his his expenses also throughout the covid period i was the only worker uh, only employed person in my family so i tried my best working so you are working sir you are doing yes, part time yes ma'am i yes part time freelancing teaching freelancing teaching yes ma'am uh so because you told that you you are also interested in teaching yes ma'am uh can you tell me like three prerequisites that a best teacher or a good teacher should have ma'am the most important for me is the empathy that the teacher must be empathetic to the to the student the second one is the communication skill that there there should there should not be a communication gap and the third will third will be the practicality of the knowledge like it should not be a rote learning it should be like practical practical in learning no matter what the subject is okay so uh, coming from darya ganj can you uh, tell me three problems of uh, that area yes ma'am uh, ma'am the biggest problem that i have faced is these the slum areas the slum population it it can compose a large part of darya ganj large chunk of darya ganj uh, there are slums and there are juggies all around darya ganj and people are congested there there are no okay. second point. amenities the second point will be the water pollution and the water availability clean drinking water uh, sometimes uh, we do not get waters for for week also then delhi jal board vans came for providing the water and the third problem that i felt was uh, the huge crowd at outside the the magistrate office so uh, sometimes people don't get they are like they are sitting in the queue for that entire day and they don't get their work done for for days i have myself have felt that so these are the three problems that i felt in darya ganj okay my last question to you who is your role model ma'am mr x s jashankar Uh, yes. Foreign minister. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hello, Laksh. Uh, you were talking about this electric charge in clouds and Benjamin Franklin. What is the source of that electric charge 
in clouds sir the electric charge is made up of the the interaction of the particles within the cloud they can be the water vapors the water in the liquid state or the water in the solid states or the ice pellets okay. when they interact with each other they produce a charge uh, where does this charge come from sir this charge comes from the friction that happens in between these uh, particles in the cloud it is known okay. as collision coalescence process also okay and we have had a lot of problems in the recent past for delhi floods and all that uh, why this urban flood is such a big problem and why is it escalating sir it is a big problem because of the rising population and huge pressure on the land as the as delhi is becoming more urbanized uh, people are getting the land and uh, the agricultural land is getting reduced more so the land it is not properly managed and uh, the construction it is not passed uh, it it does not pass scrutiny of the delhi uh, dda at many times so it leads to a uh, reduction in seepage of waters uh, through uh, through the soil inside the to recharge the ground water level and have you heard about this concept like sponge cities yes and sir what is a sponge city sir a sponge city is one which absorbs the excess water and recharges the ground water through that and is it possible in delhi can we create a sponge city for delhi sir in long term certainly we can we can yes sir okay now uh, we have had this frothing in yamuna right recently yes, sir. a big problem Uh, what could what is your solution for that what do you think what has been done and what should be done for that sir in short term the delhi government itself has uh, done many experiments to overcome the frothing they have made an iit graduate team to overcome the frothing and they okay. they they use the airs and the air balloons to remove the frothing but that's a temporary solution it's not a permanent solution for me the permanent solution lies in the behavioral change of the management of water in delhi as a state and uh, the management at the segregation in the wastewater treatment plants uh, for example this wazirabad the plant it is not up to the date the technology is redundant and obsolete so it cannot uh, take away the the minute chemicals the microorganisms from the water any restrictive measures that have been taken so far in delhi yes sir there have been many restricted uh, measures for example in the uh, nigambodh ghat Uh, the dumping of construction waste and the dumping of the chemicals by the industries have been banned near the ghat directly in the yamuna before uh, before passing it through the sewage treatment plant and uh, uh, along with this there is a very big problem of e, e waste management especially in delhi and urban areas so what is this extended uh, producer responsibility bill sir this epr bill it has been introduced on the lines of the uh, the responsibility of the a producer who produces the electronic waste the producer has the onus to collect and dispose of the waste on the lines of the bill on the guidelines given in the e waste management rules 2019 and has has it been successful so far has brought any good results sir a yes and a no many companies they are registered with the e, we are with the government to com, uh, to dispose of the electric waste they are generating to collect back system Uh, especially the tata powers i have uh, i have read about it that they are mm. doing good reliance industries are also doing good but many other countries especially the informal sectors and those companies uh, which are not in india like the chinese dumping uh, parts of the semiconductors and others they are not following the rules so uh, my last question yes sir uh, since you have been in delhi you studied in delhi everything in delhi so uh, despite having very high per capita income good infrastructure why is sex ratio of delhi so less one reason what do you think is the main reason is female feticide so high no sir i don't think that female feticide is high in delhi sir i think it is because of the uh, it, it is because of the higher ambition of the people of delhi P most of the people are migrated to delhi from the rural areas or the other states they come here to do the jobs their interest lies in their uh, home state or their home village so their their extended families they 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 are residing in their home state like the migrant laborer that's why i believe that uh, that the sex ratio is low in delhi all right thank you sir laksh as per the uh, global hunger index what are the challenges especially what we see in the uh, international uh, arena what generally we see that uh, the global hunger is actually on the, is on the rise now what are the challenges uh, for the world economy to face in the coming years and what are the roles for india that can be performed please sir 
the go- global hung- hunger index that has been published re- uh, last year according to it the major challenge that i find is the malnutrition among the children that the children they are not getting the nutritious diet and it does not mean that they are not getting enough food they are not getting the right food so eat right can be one of the things that should happen not in india but across the world so do so to do that we have to increase the agricultural productivity while keeping in mind that the the product is also healthy and it is also multi nutritious the changing pattern the dietary patterns of the people they are also in the lines and the 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 uh, the disparity between the regions like in africa in the united states it is also one of the things that we should consider so in total to conclude i would say that uh, to overcome this challenge india's role will be to provide and be the agrarian leader of the world because we have been the agrarian leader of the world now just to acquire international space uh, what about our food sufficiency what about our food security challenges just to acquire some international space are we going to play some role in that in that regard sir indeed we are going to play a lot of role in in future why, and we are why, still why why because but but the reason is that we do have our challenges we do have our food sufficiency problems and things like that sir i believe that the insufficiency of food in india does not only mean that there is less production in india it means that the people are not getting the produced food they it is getting it is getting mismanaged uh, a lot of food as as per the ashok dalwai committee also 30% of the food grains are rooting in the fci godowns so it's about the management of the food many of the food perishable food especially they are getting perished without getting to the cons- okay that's all from us laksh yes sir imagine a situation you go and take a loan from the bank it does not matter whether it's a national nationalized bank or not unfortunately you are unable to repay the loan the loan becomes an npa what is the legal status of lakshya anand are you bankrupt are you insolvent or are you both sir it depends on what kind of loan i have taken personal loan personal loan sir uh, is it uh, a secured loan or unsecured loan did i give some unsecured loan unsecured loan sir my status uh, it depends on the bank section if the bank takes the action against me and legal action then i will be uh, and the amount of the loan also take as a large part in it so it might go to the ipc uh, the uh, the resolution process under the insolvency and bankruptcy code or it can either go to the consumer court as well if the bank bank takes it to there or it can go to a, a court court of law any court of law and if uh, an extension or moratorium is given to me i will be given some time to give repay you the loan you beautifully not answered the question my question once again what is the legal status of lakshya anand are you an insolvent are you bankrupt let us stick there sir i am an insolvent you are an insolvent then what is the difference between an insolvent and a bankrupt sir an insolvent is uh, not guilty of bankruptcy in legal terms Very good. while a bankrupt is legally a, uh, is a legally like it it is in a crime of bankruptcy acha it's a crime all right all right do you watch movies lakshya yes sir i do uh, hindi movies sir generally english i avoid movies. using the word bollywood you know that's condescending no sir i generally watch english movies generally watch english movies all right happen to catch up rrr triple r no sir i have not doesn't matter a uh, very boisterous character played by junior ntr uh, kumaram bheem he is from gond tribe what is the contribution of gond tribe in indian national movement sir gond tribes as a known frontier tribe had a large role in the indian national movement against the east india company in the 19th last part of the 19th century they have organized against the east india company's intervention in their legal rights and the traditional rights on the land and the forest they had uh, uh, formed uh, groups to uh, go against the east indian company but lakshya don't you think the constant tussle between gond tribes and nizams actually helped the britishers to cement their rule in the southern part of india but it is because of the uh, because of the fallacy of the gond tribe and the nizams to reunite with each other lakshya of late a lot of media has been hankering on macro economic indicators including our economic survey what do you understand if i make the statement that the macro economic indicators of my country of our country is good or are good sir i understand from this statement that uh, that the economy is in state of recovery and it is stable the inflation is in the targeted range and as well as the monetary and the capital market they are working well and healthy 
acha you will also include capital markets within the fold of macroeconomic indicators say for example if there is an upward correction in sensex so according to you then macroeconomic indicators are fine hail and healthy no sir because it is not a large term uh, market it's it's a less than one year market all right so you're from delhi yes sir as a as a delhiite if 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 at all if that word is usable can you see the contradiction in roles of the elected chief minister of delhi vis-a-vis -vis a central appointee called lieutenant governor or lieutenant governor how is the relationship is it a love hate relationship sir it's a constitutional relationship i will put it like that okay we are the left hand governor due to delhi strategic position but the supreme court calls it as precariously dangerous uh yes sir but it was a divisional bench of two judges incorrect it's a three judge bench three judge bench yeah sorry sir my bad sir uh when the supreme court held that judgment it also noted that there is a harmonious relationship between center and the delhi government Very and good. they must work together rather than working against each other excellent where do you get this do you get this information from gnctd act of 1991 or do you get this information from article 239 double a sir i get from 239 double a okay all right and why is it that the 2021 amendment to the 1991 act is dubbed as a stab on federalism so the last year's amendment mm -hmm. right uh sir it's because many of the powers which has been which had been earlier in the hands of the chief minister it has been uh, given to the left hand government a represent an unelected representative of the center hmm. uh the bill it, it he can, he can overrule the bill lakshmi if there is a contradiction of stance between the elected chief minister and the left hand governor today as i speak to you who shall have primacy sir as per the guidelines of supreme court and the bill as well as the 239 double a the left hand government uh, governor will have the supremacy the left hand governor will have supremacy that is fine as per the 2021 amendment but article 239 double a is very clear there is no primacy given to the either of the parties they have to swim or in this case sink together thank you okay lakshya yes sir lakshya you mentioned that uh, your favorite to uh, I mean, icon is uh, foreign minister, and also I can see that uh, foreign service is your first choice. But if I look at your uh, service preferences, it appears the humble background has, uh, rather than giving humility, has given arrogance to you. Why uh, have you not opted for such important services like uh, many many services? In fact, we have opted only for eight nine services. A person who's uh, unemployed, who's come, who's a son of a laborer, who has such a humble background. Don't you think it is uh, some kind of arrogance in it, sir? I think that for me, I am not made for those services which I have not opted. I I don't possess the required aptitude for those services. If you are uh, good for IPS and you are not for DANEPS, then it means that it is arrogance. It has nothing to do with the nature of the service, sir. I also don't know much about the services, but other services which I have opted, I know little bit about them, if not in entirety. Okay, nice, nice talking to you. Is there anything you want to ask? No, sir. Nice talking to you. Your interview is over. You can go. Thank you, sir. Aye. Yes, sir. Sit down, Lakshay. Thank you, sir. Lakshay, is it going to be your first uh, interview? Yes, sir. Tell me. you are happy with your performance or you believed that you could have done a little better sir a lot better lot better right you still have a lot of time actually uh, not many uh, candidates have that kind of time your interview is on 6th of may uh, see uh, i hope you realize that you are definitely a candidate which is not in the league with other candidates for variety of reason not necessarily all positive but variety of reasons right so uh, that is something uh, uh, that makes you a candidate in which the board board members will be eager to have i mean they'll have interest in you so so the initial aspect which we have to teach to every candidate how to draw attention of the board that you are not one of the uh, of the mill candidate that uh, will not apply to you because you will have their attention to begin with your challenge will be to sustain that uh, uh, interest and also to uh, 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 to capitalize on that interest i believe uh, you you partly uh, are able to do it at at places you let this advantage uh, dissipate 
not a bad, a good thing to do, not a good thing to do. I mean, capitalize on it well. Uh, coming to specifics, uh, you carry wonderful personality. Your entry, it was a little weak in the sense that rather than taking loudly permission to enter, you kind of actually entered, you started with a good mark. I mean, there is a template issue here. Make a template in your mind that I will be doing step one, algorithm kind of, one, two, three. And then repeat it in your uh, mind a couple of times so that uh, when it matter, you are able to execute it in the same sequence. Uh, general template is loudly ask for the permission from the gate. Uh, when obviously, you will be granted permission. Come sm walk smartly to your chair, uh, stand beside your chair, greet the members in uh, uh, appropriate order and then expect you to be asked to sit down or take permission to sit down. And then repeat it in your mind a couple of times so, so that you are able to execute it that way. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, as I said, your personality is good, you carry yourself well. Uh, your volume, uh, voice level, uh, both in terms of speed and volume is good. Uh, there isn't much hand movement, though there is a hand clasping thing, uh, which is not the ideal situation, but is not bad either, right? Uh, ideally, we uh, advise to put your hands like this, uh, unless you have this vigorous hand movement. Yeah, thing. Sir, that's why if I you I have a vigorous it. hand movement, so you are forced to actually yeah, clasp sir. your hand. So, that, that's the. Uh, eye contact by and large uh, was okay, uh, flow was also okay. Uh, uh, go, uh, since you are pitching for that humble background thing by mentioning it both in DAF as well as uh, in your introduction itself, so it means you, that is one, uh, one area you want to play on, right? There then you should be very, very strong, right? Uh, so, if you are pitching yourself to be a person who should be inducted into foreign service and you are coming from uh, 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 marginalized section, then the relationship, the different aspect that should be on tap, right? You uh, initially it appears that you are not following that logical consistency thing, right? Uh, you, uh, you must have noticed, in fact, I let it go, but they may not let it go. So, uh, my advice is that uh, please work on it, that it appears that what you are saying is logical, right? Uh, the, the kind of reasons you are giving are logical, both whatever you are mentioning it at. Work on it. Coming to the um, knowledge aspect, in general, you are good. We could not check, uh, check much of the electrical engineering part, which I love to do, but then I had so many responsibilities this time, so I let it go. But uh, I am sure you have prepared well because you are a DTU graduate in electrical engineering. You should be thorough in electrical engineering as well. Uh, other things, in general, you are handling uh, things well, but in communication, there is one thing called listening. Uh, uh, listening is not just hearing, it is actually understanding the core intention of the board member and here it appears that uh, you were missing it uh, a couple of times and then you are coming up with uh, excuses which uh, were not uh, good at, uh, for the uh, situation like uh, here. Uh, but then despite that whatever you, have, whatever you have filled, you need to have a even more convincing reply to that, right? Uh, th that you will have to handle. You just cannot uh, 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 let it pass uh, to the to those people say uh, believing that you are actually arrogant because uh, arrogance is not something they would be looking uh, in the uh, new uh, civil servant, right? Other things you are already handling well. Uh, prepare the lee a little better. Uh, it is there, but you can uh, further uh, do it a bit better. Okay, sir. Thank All you, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir.